The House will come to order. Prayer by the chaplain. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for this day, another day to serve you by what we say and do. Everything we have and everything we are is your gift. Grant these elected representatives the wisdom and courage they need so that they may always act for the good of the people they represent, not only their own constituents, but for the common good of all Minnesotans. May they always act with charity and good feeling toward one another, even when they disagree. You have revealed yourself as a God who loves us, and so confident in your goodness to us, we are bold to make this prayer in your most holy name. Amen. Members, our guest chaplain for today is Deacon Nathan Allen from the Church of St. Agnes right here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Please remain standing as Abby and Amanda lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The clerk will take the roll. The clerk will close the roll. A quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal for the preceding day. Journal of the House, 87th Session, 2012, 74th Day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Thursday, February 16th, 2012. There are no objections. Further reading the journal will be dispensed with, and the journal will stand as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Hearing no objections, the journal stands as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Reports to Standing Committees and Divisions. Copy of this order of business has been placed on each member's desk. If there are no objections, the reports will be adopted. Hearing no objections, reports are adopted. Second reading of House Files. Second reading, House File 1872. Second reading. Second reading, House File 2227. Second reading. Introduction and first reading of House Files. The following House Files have been offered for introduction. Chief Clerk will report these House Files and give them their first reading. Introduction and first reading of House Files 2344 through 2414. 
First reading, House File 2344 through 2414. House File 2394, an act relating to public safety. Pursuant to Article 4, Section 19 of the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, Lomer moves that the rule be there and be suspended, and urgency be declared, and that the rules of the House be so far suspended that House File 2394 be given its second and third readings and be placed on the final passage. I call the member from Washington, Representative Lomer, to your motion to declare an urgency. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. We are suspending the rules and the urgency on House File 2930, no, 2394 excuse me, today because we need to close a loophole in our sexual offender community notification laws. As you know, the state is getting ready to release a civilly committed sexual offender into a halfway house, perhaps as early as this Friday. Current law does not require community notification prior to entering a halfway house as part of their release. The urgency is necessary because the administration and Hennepin County are about, again, to release this offender from the program. Thank you. Any discussion? Discussion to the motion to declare an urgency. The member from Olmsted, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, first of all, I want to be very clear. No one is being released from the MSOP program. There is no release being planned. What is being planned is a conditional discharge, which is very different. We had a hearing on this in the Health and Human Service Reform Committee last week. And the Commissioner of Human Services made it very clear. The person who's now a client at MSOP is being stepped down into a halfway house under very, very tight conditions, including 24-hour supervision and GPS. So this is not a release. So if the uh, reason to declare an urgency today is because of a pending release, there is none. Secondly, members, I have been told by the Commissioner of Human Services today that the very earliest that this, condition, that this provisional um, discharge would occur is March 12th. So while I, I do think it makes sense to prudently re-examine the notification, I have absolutely no problem with that. The administration is not releasing anyone from MSOP and the conditional, uh, the provisional discharge is not happening when Representative Lomer fears that it may happen. So there is time to consider this bill in the normal course. And members, I think that would be the prudent thing to do in this situation and let me explain why for those of you who have not worked with this issue. The people in the MSOP program, we call them clients, and the reason for that is that they are not serving a sentence of conviction. Now you may wish they were, but these are not people serving a sentence of conviction. We are able to hold them in this program and keep them off of our streets because we are giving them treatment. Okay, they are being treated. That is our constitutional basis for holding them and keeping them off the street. Like it or not, that is the fact. If the program is not treating people but really is just an excuse to hold them, the Constitution will not allow us to do that. So we as a legislature, I think, have worked very hard to make sure that what we are really doing is treating people. Now, changing the notification laws as been proposed might be just fine, but I think we can all agree here today that what we want is to make sure that we enhance community safety, not put it into jeopardy. If we make this program in jeopardy of being found unconstitutional, we are in fact putting our citizens in danger because if we don't have a constitutional basis to hold them, they will perhaps be released. 
And I think we can all agree that we would be in a world of hurt if that happened, because obviously there are some very, very dangerous people there. They're there being treated. We cannot just ignore that fact. Now, as I say again, I want to be very clear. I'm not necessarily opposed to tightening up the notification. In fact, I'd really like to know more about that, because it may be a good thing to do. On the other hand, it may be putting the program further in jeopardy of being found unconstitutional if we're not then able to use these facilities for treatment the way it's intended now. So um, I really feel that declaring an urgency to do this when there really is no urgency really just tells people that they should be afraid when in fact the Department of Human Services is moving very, very carefully a panel of three judges has found that this person can safely be moved to provisional discharge. So members, I would urge you to vote no on the urgency. There really is no urgency, and we really ought to take up the bill promptly, but in the normal course of things so that we can hear from the experts and make sure that what we're doing is actually enhancing community safety and not putting it further into jeopardy. Discussion. The member from Washington, Representative Lomer, to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Liebling. Um, you are absolutely correct. It is provisional discharge and not release, so I, I do stand corrected on that. And I just want to add that by law, it's a 15-day timeline. That 15 days would be this Friday or Saturday, so if, if it's later, but by law, it could be as early as this Friday or Saturday. So I guess I would just say, what is wrong with the community notification? Why do we not want to do this as soon as we possibly can? Give the law enforcement a chance to do this. So thank you. Discussion to the motion. Discussion. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion to declare an urgency signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Clerk will, give Clerk will give the bill its second reading. Second reading, House File 2394. Second reading. Clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File 2394. Third reading. Discussion to the bill. Discussion. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. Clerk. We'll close the roll. There being 127 ayes and one nay, the bill is passed as title is agreed to. <laughs> Member from Washington, Representative Dean. Mr. Speaker, I move the calendar of the day be continued. Representative Dean moves that the calendar for the day be continued. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Message. Messages from the Senate. Just put it. Messages from the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I hereby announce that the Senate exceeds the request of the House for appointment of conference committee on the amendments adopted by the Senate House File 392. Senators Wolf. Perry and Harrington. Signed, Kel R. Ludeman, Secretary of the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following Senate files herewith transmitted. Senate file numbers 1073, 1236, 1240, 1371, 1492. Mr. Speaker, I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following, uh, passage by the Senate of the following Senate files herewith transmitted. Senate file 1123, Kel R. Ludeman, Secretary of the Senate. I call the member from Ramsey, Representative Moran. For what purpose do you rise? Mr. Speaker, 
I would like to do a point of personal privilege. State your point of personal privilege, Representative Moran. Today in the gallery, we have members of Girls Rock the Capitol. Girls Rock the Capitol, hosted by the Minnesota Women's Consortium, is an annual leadership and civic engagement program for girls aged 13 to 18. At a day-long program held at the Minnesota Capitol, girls learn about state government, activism, and how to interact with elected officials. The girls present and attend workshops on issues pertinent to their lives. They hold a mock election and committee hearing and interact face-to-face -face with elected officials. Throughout the day, the girls are exposed to women in leadership roles. Through this education, role modeling, and hands-on practice, the girls learn to advocate for themselves and what they believe in. This year, we are pleased to have 20 young college women from four Middle Eastern countries, hosted by Girls International Forum. Join us for this event. Please give a warm welcome to all the girls participating in Girls Rock the Capitol. You stand, please. Thank you, Representative Moran. First reading of Senate Files. Introduction of first reading of Senate File 1073, an act relating to education. The bill is being referred to the Committee on Education. Introduction of first reading of Senate File 1236, an act relating to civil law. The bill is being referred to the Committee on Judiciary and Public Safety. Introduction of first reading of Senate File 1240, an act relating to public safety. Cornish moves that Senate File 1240 and House File 11535 now in the General Register be referred to the Chief Clerk for comparison. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Introduction of first reading of Senate File 1371. <laughs> Introduction of first reading of Senate File 1371, an act relating to public safety. Lemire moves that House, Senate File 1371, House File 1468, now in the General Register, be referred to the Chief Clerk for comparison. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Introduction of first reading of Senate File 1492, an act relating to state government. The bill is being referred to the Committee on Governmental Operations and Elections. Introduction of first reading of Senate File 1123, an act relating to public safety. McFarland moves that Senate File 1123, House File 1245, now in the General Register, be referred to the Chief Clerk for comparison. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Motions and resolutions. Copy of the non-controversial motions are online at members' desk. If there are no objections, we will take action on these motions first. Hearing no objections, so ordered. <laughs> Announcements. Call on the member from Hennepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a point of personal privilege. State your point of personal privilege. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, I just wanted to call members' attention to the fact that tomorrow in the Capitol Rotunda, from 1.30 to 3.30, uh, we will have the Minnesota Children's Museum there with an exhibit. And uh, as many of you know, we have one of the best children's museums in the nation, right here in uh, Minnesota and right here in St. Paul. And they're going to have some exhibits there. Um, uh, they include one called Go Figure, and that is one of the first exhibits that will be open in the new Rochester Museum. It brings math to life and uses, uh, shows math in everyday uses through children's literature. Storyland is another exhibit that will be here in the Capitol tomorrow, and it focuses on literacy development, and it is part of a touring exhibit that the museum is doing that right now is in Redwood Falls, Minnesota. Um, the museum also brings curriculum into the classrooms and there will be a sample of some of the new curricular offerings um, called Glowing Up, Growing Up Global uh, that really aligns with the new social studies curriculum standards. So um, I hope all of you uh, will take an opportunity to visit the exhibit put on by the Children's Museum tomorrow and I thank the members for their attention. 
Thank you, Representative Loon. Announcements. Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Republican first-term members will be meeting in 217 immediately following session. Uh, Republican first-term members. Thank you. Announcements. The member from Olmsted, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, if any of you are interested in actually seeing what goes on at the Minnesota Sex Offender Program, there will be a tour this Friday, and I know that's short notice and many of you already are committed, but we hope to have a, we will have a bipartisan group of legislators going to St. Peter to hear a little bit more about what's actually going on there. So if your constituents are concerned, maybe it would be a good time for you to come and learn and be able to answer their questions a little bit better about what we're doing, spending so many millions of dollars are we really buying public safety with that money? So please think about coming on Friday morning and please let me know if you're able to come and it uh, should be a very interesting morning. Thank you, Representative Liebling. Announcements? Announcements. The member from Washington, Representative Dean. Mr. Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 4.30 p.m. Wednesday, February 22nd, 2012. Representative Dean moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 4.30 p.m. Wednesday, February 22nd, 2012. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Representative Dean. Move the House do now adjourn. Representative Dean moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The motion prevails. The House stands adjourned until 4.30 p.m. Wednesday, February 22, 2012.